Hi, this is Charles Kelly, Money Tips. Hope you're having a good day. How are you all today? Uh, great to see you. Uh, today I want to report that house prices have suffered their largest monthly fall for 11 years. This is according to the Nationwide Building Society, one of the uh, country's largest uh, lenders and uh, one of the few remaining mutual building societies left, or few, few, one of the, the largest anyway. Um, so what, what does this mean? Um, well, in, in depth it means that the, the prices fell by 1.7% from April to May. Uh, for, not surprisingly, because of, of this coronavirus going on and, and all the other things happening in, in, in the world, and the fact that uh, activity in April had already dropped by 50%, uh, according to HMRC data. Uh, so we've seen a drop of 1.7 month, month on month. So it's a monthly figure. Uh, which is the, the largest since 2009. It doesn't sound a lot. I mean, when you think about it, oh, my house has gone down by 1.7%. Not not a lot of money, you know, a couple of thousand pound on a hundred thousand, maybe four or five thousand pound on an average house. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, but <clears throat> if this trend continues, as one economist has predicted, that it could be, it could see a slow decline over the rest of the year, then I think, you know, that, that starts to look more, a little bit more serious. Obviously, we could be in a situation where this could reverse as, as a state agents get back to, to work and start opening up again. And, you know, it may just be a blip on, on, on the, the, the chart, if you like. Um, the annual growth in house prices is also halved by uh, from 3.7 to 1.8 percent uh, as, as the market is really has been hammered. So we could it could just be a temporary blip. But it could be a more of a longer term decline because we've seen pretty much a boom market since uh, uh, 2009 with, with a few uh, curve, uh, downward trends along the way. But, you know, if you look at the prices where they were in, in the last financial crisis to where they are now, it, there's a big jump in most parts of the country. And I think as a, as a society, we're just used to seeing house prices go up all the time. You think anybody can be an investor. You just have to go and buy a property and it's going to go up in value. Right. Uh, but well, maybe that, that that's changing. Um, we, we could see a, a, a new kind of market. I, I, I don't know. I don't think we can see these double digit price rises that we've seen in, in the days of high inflation. Remember, we've got low interest rates, low inflation at the moment. So maybe we're not going to see that high growth in property. But we, we, I'm sure we will see growth. Um, j just remember that, um, you know, the, the country still needs houses. We still need properties there is a shortage of properties there's a shortage of rental properties there's a shortage of properties to live in and that's because we've had population growth over the last few years uh, we're, we're a relatively small country with a big population of over 60 million and people are still coming here so we, we're going to need properties there's, there's more people that are uh, living in smaller dwellings more people more divorces more people living longer uh, and and so there's still going to be a market there, but I think for the for the rest of this year, I think we are going to see a, a decline, not just because of the coronavirus just now, but because of other economic situations. And one economic has predicted a, a start of a protracted decline over the remainder of the year. But if you look that we've got 8.7 million people on job furlough, that's 25% of the work uh, force at the moment. Uh, we've got 2 million people claiming unemployment benefit, 2 million self-employed people looking for uh, these bounce back loans uh, and incidentally the banking sector has predicted that 50% of those bounce back loans will not be repaid so where is that money going to come from to to sort out the losses taxpayers you you and me if you're a taxpayer so we've got you know uh, more than 10 million people that's more than a third of the workforce force who are completely economically uh, inactive at the moment not really producing anything and that, I think that's a serious thing um, and, and confidence has been hit by, 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 by what's going on. So I think that that will affect things. But if you are, you know, what does it mean for you as a home buyer and investor? Well, if you're a home buyer, what, what can you do? You just sit on it and, and wait for it to, to ride out. If you're not selling at the moment, it doesn't make any difference to you whatsoever unless you, you're remortgaging or, or you have to change your mortgage. Um, if you're an investor, I think there will be uh, some opportunities out there, maybe some bargains, maybe some people who want to sell fast. Um, I, I'm not saying swoop on anybody that's in trouble, but there will be people who want to move fast. And if you can come up with cash or you can bring in investors to buy cash, then it's a win-win situation for everybody. Um, I think if you're a first-time buyer, 
I wouldn't be in any particular mad rush to buy anything if, if prices are, are, are declining. Uh, same thing with investor. Why, why rush into things if, if we're expecting prices to decline? Uh, the money supply could be an issue uh, if building societies uh, start pulling in their reins a bit more. Um, in, in most financial crises, there's always been these cheap properties there. And I think I'd, I'd love to buy that property, but I can't get the money. I remember this back in the 90s. I remember in 2008, it was, it was also difficult. Uh, so that, that's always the way. The lenders, when prices are at rock bottom, they don't want to lend. They said, no, we're not lending now. It's too risky. When prices are at the top, everybody's lending. They're piling, they're throwing money at everybody. <clears throat> I remember one lender, I think it was the, the old Alliance Building Society, saying they wouldn't lend in Docklands. They were not going to lend in Docklands because Docklands had really hit rock bottom. They said, uh, Docklands uh, is not suitable. Property in Docklands is not suitable as security for a mortgage. I remember there was this BBC Panorama program saying, and people, experts, experts were on there saying the market would take 20 years to recover. Well, it, that was called complete nonsense. People were saying it would never recover, and, and this sort of stuff. So we can't. It's not all doom and gloom, but it, there is obviously a change in in what's going on. Um, and if you're uh, interested in learning, maybe how you can take advantage of these opportunities, uh, there's many events coming up. Uh, free events, free seminars, so you can you can find the link below, uh, and you know maybe you can get into to property yourself. Maybe you can get into it without using your own money. Maybe you can use techniques like rent to rent options, uh, and um, what's the other one? Rent to rent options, and the uh, it's completely gone. Anyway, there are many, many techniques you can use to get into into property without using your own money. That's what that's the other. You can use joint ventures. You can use other people's money. Uh, you can use crowdfunding. There's all sorts of ways of uh, acquiring or buying properties without necessarily using your, your own money. I talked the other day about um, Elvis's manager. Uh, I, I, was a, I was a great fan of Elvis. And I talked about uh, Elvis Presley's manager who was Colonel Tom Parker. Now, I knew that he'd uh, taken over and bought out Elvis Presley's contract. And I assumed that he did it with his own money, that he was this big shot Simon Cowell. But it, it wasn't true. He was actually just a, a guy, I think he had one other person he was managing and he, uh, you know, he didn't have much money. He, he, was, he was a bit of a hustler, really. And he, he, he said to, to Sam Phillips, who owns Sun Records, uh, yes, how much would it cost to buy Elvis Presley? And Sam Phillips said, well, <clears throat> I'm not selling, uh, but if I did sell, if the money was right, maybe $35,000. And he thought no one would ever pay $35,000 for this unknown singer. But... Colonel Tom Parker had seen something in Elvis that other people maybe hadn't, and he realised he could be a big superstar. Uh, so he came up with the money. How did he do it? Well, he brought in a, a joint venture partner, if you like. He went to RCA Victor Records and got them to put up the money to buy out the contract and in the process make him the manager with total control over Elvis with a 50-50 deal where he earned 50% of Elvis's earnings uh, over his lifetime. And it, it was like the deal of the century, but he did it without his own money. So I'm just saying, don't get limited by the belief that you can't do anything because you haven't got the money, you haven't got the experience. You can find all that, that, that experience and get into any sort of business, any property, but not, not necessarily using your own money. Even Richard Branson doesn't always use his own money. He's, nowadays, he's using his name. He tried to borrow from the British government recently to bail out his airline. That's how he uses his own money. <laughs> so, so there you go. So thanks for listening, everybody. I'm sorry it's a bit of a doom and gloom session, but it could be opportunity as well. If you want to get into property, have a look at my links below and, and maybe you can uh, find a way of uh, getting onto a free webinar, free seminar, and, and it could change your life and build a second income and maybe even help you to quit the rat race. Okay, so thanks for listening. Thanks for everyone who's tuned in on Facebook Live. Love to see you. Hi to Vix there, uh, my, my fellow author. I hope your book's going well. And hi to everybody on, on iTunes and wherever you listen to me. Thanks very much. And have a great day. Bye for now.